There's been some wheeling and dealing ahead of the NHL draft, especially in the Central Division. We'll discuss some of the moves that have happened, could happen, as well as one that the Wild are linked to as well on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. If this is your first time tuning in to Locked On Wild, we welcome you on board and hope that you stick with us through the rest of the offseason into next season as well. If you are an everydayer who tunes in each and every day of the week, we're glad to have you back once again. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new content throughout the week. On today's episode, Alex Micheletti joins us. We'll talk about potential interest for the Minnesota Wild in yet another Winnipeg Jet, this time being Mark Shifley. We'll also talk about some moves that have happened in the Central Division so far and a couple more that are in the works and potential targets at 21 for your Minnesota Wild. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. As mentioned, joined by Alex Micheletti today for his regular Micheletti Monday spots. And Alex, we have seen a little bit of activity start to ramp up ahead of the NHL draft this week. And one of the big ones was an ESPN suggested trade. I believe it was Greg Wyshynski who put together a potential deal for the Minnesota Wilds to come away with the services of Mr. Mark Shifley, who is uh, in the final year of his deal with Winnipeg. He is a little on the older side. He, he is right at 30. And the proposed deal included the likes of Carson Lambos. It included uh, a first-round pick as well. Uh, there were a couple of other pieces also and so let's just dive into this to start. Uh, what did you think of the trade? Are you in? Are you interested in acquiring uh, Mark Shifley uh, from the Winnipeg Jets? I'm really interested. <laughs> I, I, I love the way that he plays. I know he gets a lot of hate from, from Wild uh, Twitter and Wild Facebook. And, you know, I was hearing it from, from uh, people. But, uh, you know, he's a heck of a centerman. Uh, he's, he's a number one center, has been since he's been in the league. Um, you know, he, he's great on the, in the faceoff dot, uh, great uh, offensively and defensively. He plays with some some grit, nastiness, and you know, I think he'd fit in perfectly with the with the way the Wild play, and uh, you know, just add to the leadership uh, team here. So there are a couple of angles to attack this from. Obviously, he is in the final year of his deal, which would mean that uh, you would have to probably have some sort of assurances that there would be an extension signed. Now, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as lucrative as what Pierre Luc Dubois is going to get from the Los Angeles Kings, as we'll talk about in a little bit. But you would you would need some cost assurance that you weren't just getting Shifley for one year. My stance on this whole thing centers around the fact that you then are going to have to do some more maneuvering mm. of the salary cap uh, in order to make it happen. And some of those pieces that uh, are included in the trade, including Carson Lambos, uh, you have potential for him to be involved in the long-term plans. The exact trade was Lambos, the first-round pick, in this year's draft, a 2024 second round pick and Freddie Goudreau in return for Shifley. And outside of Lambos and probably this year's first round pick, I don't know if I'm looking at this from Winnipeg's perspective. I mean, Freddie Goudreau is a, a good bottom six center, but I don't know what sense it makes for them to acquire him. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that is 
a tantalizing enough piece other than to try to make the money work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm Winnipeg, I'm, I'm trying to get a better, you know, younger prospect, you know, uh, you know, in addition to, to, you know, to Lambos, uh, you know, probably another skilled young forward. They are just in complete rebuild, rebuild mode. Um, they're going to look completely different uh, this upcoming season. No one wants to be a, a part of a rebuild in Winnipeg. No one wants to be a part of a rebuild in Calgary. And so, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be weird because that core um, with Winnipeg uh, was there for a long, long time. And so, uh, you know, they, they <laughs> uh, to lose Hellebuck probably too, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be devastating for that fan base. But uh, they want to start the rebuild. And so, yeah, they, the, the thing with the Wild is, you know, I was trying to tell people too on Twitter that number one centers just don't <laughs> become available too often. Yeah. And so, um, if he's available, you want to get your name in the ring for sure, um, and see at least see explore what the what they're trying to get back. Um, and the Wild, uh, as we have talked about throughout this the, this uh, season and summer, they have prospects. They have, as the Athletic says, the number one prospect pool. And so at some point, you're going to have to use those for assets uh, and trades. And so um, a guy like this, I think it's worth uh, shooting for. Yeah, and I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth right. because I've been one of the ones that has been trying to kind of push this. Like, you're not just going to draft a guy at 21 to be a 1C. It has to come from higher up in the draft. Those guys don't typically get to free agency. And so if you're looking at the potential options for how to get centers of that caliber, it leaves you with basically – making a trade. And so I I think you are absolutely right that the Wilds need to at least check in on this. But I think a lot of the response from fans is this would have been a move that would have made sense within the last couple of years. With this team taking a little bit of a step back, it makes more sense to just allow for younger players to fill spots. But again, as we've seen with other teams here in Minnesota, having good prospect pools is great, but if those guys, a lot of those guys don't necessarily turn out, and so you have to use some of them as assets. You gotta, you gotta give those guys spots. It's, I think it would have been a move that would have made sense last year or the year before, um, but at this point, I think they will probably wait to try to acquire somebody until after uh, the cap hits go down. Then you really come out swinging in that off season, go get your guy, whatever the cost is and, um, and roll into that season with your, uh, with your one C, whoever that ends up being. Yeah, it's gonna, this is going to be a really interesting season because uh, as we saw this past season, um, Dean had a lot of trouble trusting these young guys that, got, you know, chances to play, um, Marco and, uh, and Kalen Addison, Marco was, was done right away. And then Kalen Addison was in the doghouse a lot of the season. And so, um, (laughs) is he going to have faith in some of these guys? You know, if, uh, there's some really ugly growing pains, is he going to keep them, you know, in the lineup or is he going to tell, you know, Bill to send them to Iowa? Uh, you know, it'll be, be very interesting. You know, they, uh, as we've talked about, they can't really sign uh, any veterans, um, you know, at least uh, for bigger than over a million. And so, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Yeah, Brad, Brandon Duhame, <laughs> as as we've been talking about, uh, you know, he could get uh, get traded in, uh, you know, the next couple of days just because his agent's playing hardball and, you uh, as we've talked about too, there's a lot of guys with his skill set that want to play in the NHL. You know, you yeah. <laughs> definitely in that uh, you know Iowa Wild team, and so um, you know if he thinks he can get more money than than what Bill is offering, you know, more power to his agent finding a team that will do it. But <laughs> you know, it's again, you know, they have to real that camp has to realize that. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of guys that want his spot. And so if he doesn't right. want to take the deal, more power to you. 
good luck. Uh, you know, you could get traded to a Columbus or <laughs> you know an Anaheim. You know, a, a team that will make the playoffs. So, you know, it's uh, you know Cam Talbot learned that the hard way with Ottawa, and now Ottawa's not going to re-sign him, and he might not find uh, an NHL deal. You know, being a goalie in the NHL, it's a lot harder because you know. You know, there's only two two NHL spots, uh, and then if you don't, then you're stuck in in Iowa riding the bus. Um, and I don't think Cam Talbot wants to do that in his career right now. Yeah, probably not. Um, I'd be very sad if Duhame didn't resign. Right. But again, like you said, it's it, it's not. He's a good player. Right. It's not a skill set though that isn't replaceable devastating like like it's yeah. gonna make them miss the playoffs because he's not on the fourth line yeah so that that is definitely one to monitor but yeah it is it is going to be a very interesting season to uh say the least uh let's turn our focus to potential options at 21st overall including taking a look at just simply what the needs are for this wild team as they look to draft in the first round. So we'll continue our chat on today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride! eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day for the everydayers coming up here uh, over the next couple of days. We'll continue to dive into mock drafts around the NHL, looking at potential options for the Minnesota Wilds as they pick at 21st. And Alex, I think... Before um, I do any of that over the next few days, we should identify needs for this team. Because as I've thought about it over the last couple of weeks, you know, we we just put we put center at the top of the list. It seems like on a on a season by season basis, similar to how the Minnesota Vikings seems like they always have offensive linemen at the top of the list. Is center, though, the number one overall need for this team, or is it more of just this team just needs some skill offensively to be able to plug into some of those spots? Yeah, I was talking to my dad about this over the weekend, and you know, he, he brought up a good point um, about uh, best player available. And um, you, know, you, uh, you just never know what the NHL draft to because a lot of these guys um, in, the, in the later part of the first round, I mean, or in – uh, you know, if you're not the first or second pick, we aren't going to see these guys for three or four years. Um, right. And so you don't know what, what the what the big club is going to look like in, in that amount of time. And so, you know, heck, heck, if you pick another defenseman, that's OK, because he's obviously probably not going to be ready until he's 21, 22. And so the team can look a lot different then. And so at this point, you, you're, you're just trying to add scale to this team you know, and, and hope it, uh, it, it, you know, pans out later in the first round, um, you know, and hope, hope he can make the team in three or four years for sure. Yeah, most definitely. And I have also seen a couple of physical defensemen linked uh, as well to the wild at 21, which is an option too. I mean, we mm -hmm. think about just the depth that this team has with defensive prospects, Brock Faber, you've got Carson Lambos, Jack Pert, You've got um, just a ton of names that fill that defensive prospect pool, but you can always add to it. And so I, I think ultimately it will come down to best player available because you're going to have somebody that slips. Somebody between 1 and 20, probably not Connor Bedard, <laughs> somebody between 1 and 20 is going to drop 
a little bit. And so then at what point do you identify them as too good to pass up and pick them, even if you had uh, a different prospect in mind, just because, hey, this player's still there. We got to go get them. Yep, exactly. And, uh, you know, we were kind of talking uh, before the podcast started, just guys we were really interested in. And uh, there was a check a check guy that we talked about, uh, Mr. Uh, Daniel Boot, uh, and he's six five. I mean, we just watched you know Vegas win the Stanley Cup with speed and and you know and and size. I mean, their forwards are big and they hit, and this this kid can score. Um, he's huge, uh, you know, and he's a winger. Um, so uh, you know, he does not play center, but you know, again, we're um, you know they're looking uh, to add uh, some you know, skill to the lineup, you know, in a few years. And so he seems like a good fit. Uh, a kid that I watched a lot this past season, uh, just because I'm big into college hockey, as we all know, is uh, Gavin Brindley from Michigan. Um, he can play center or, or wing. Um, he's smaller, uh, you know, about 5'9", but uh, he's tenacious on the puck. You know, he plays exactly how the Wild uh, like to play, and uh, he can score. He's one of the fastest guys in this class too. He's, he's, he's so much fun to watch Uh Florida kid, you know? And so this, this game of hockey, it just continues to grow. And I'm sure he growing up, he watched, uh, you know, Tampa Bay and, and Florida and, you know, it's just awesome to see you can make it from anywhere um, and make it in, into the NHL. So yeah, those are some names to look out for. Also Callum Ritchie. He's a center to a Canadian kid. Uh, that can really score and, uh, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, another center that uh, continues to be linked um, to them this little while. I've seen Otto Stenberg a few places mm -hmm. uh, for the wild at 21. The one that is kind of intriguing just because nobody really knows what's going to happen is uh, Matt V. Mitchkov. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it right now because <laughs> I've talked about this. Um, I, I've sent messages to the, the group chat that we're in with some other podcasts throughout Minnesota. Um, I think the Anaheim Ducks are trying to run a smokescreen campaign because there is some steam <laughs> that they are potentially thinking about taking him at number two instead of Adam Fantilli. Here's what's happening. They are trying to get somebody to panic and pop up to number two so that they can still take Fantilli. Uh, I just, I don't see there being any way that they don't go Fantilli and they instead go Mitchkov. Yeah, it's you know, Pat Verbeek. Uh, we saw uh, the craziness with him and Bill at the trade deadline. Uh, you know, Pat <laughs> hung up uh, uh, the phone on Bill Guerin and said, I'm not going to give you Klingberg. And then he called Bill back yeah. and, and, and uh, agreed to the trade. And so, I just don't. Th I don't think he really cares what what people think of him, and um, his his fan base, I'm sure, would be furious just because uh, it's the unknown drafting a Russian. Um, you just don't know, uh, you know, if they will just continue to, you know, re resign uh, with their, uh, you know, KHL squad. Will Putin let them over? Will the unrest, the civil unrest, going on right now? Uh, you know, would they defect and just never be able to come back home too? Uh, wouldn't that be something if he just, you know, he gets drafted and then just doesn't leave Nashville? <laughs> they, he just doesn't go back. But yeah, it would be, that would be insane. Uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, there would be some political you know, craziness. And so I'm sure he'll go right back over. But uh, yeah, it would be, it would be chaos for, for that to happen. And then, you know, Columbus would gladly take Adam Fantilli at the, you know, the next pick for sure. Yeah. They, if that were to happen, they'd be like, Oh, okay. I guess, I guess we're doing this. Then. But <laughs> yeah, it will be, it'll be fascinating to see what happens. Locked on wild. will of course have you covered. We'll have a reaction to the one pick in the first round right now. Uh, there is potential with two second round picks that the Wild maybe try to get back up into the first. Regardless of what they do, we'll have reaction for you. We'll react to all the picks as well throughout the week. Uh, I did want to finish by looking at some of the moves. There have been a couple moves within the Central Division so far. Uh, some interesting ones and a couple of moves 
that are still in the works. And so we'll just recap what the Central Division has been doing over the last couple of days to finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, make sure you stay tuned for our draft coverage throughout the rest of the week, as well as a look at some of the crazy moves that will no doubt happen when free agency begins as well. Probably going to be pretty quiet for the Minnesota Wild, but hey, I would be shocked if we don't get something from the Wilds this week with the draft. Maybe it's an extension for somebody, something. We're, we're going to get something here. It, it, this can't drag on forever. I mean, technically it could, but I don't think it's going to. So hopefully we get some, uh, some wild tidbits we can digest here um, within this week. And if we do, we'll, uh, we'll, of course, have you covered. Alex, Central Division's been busy couple of trades that uh, are pretty much close to finalized. We had Ryan Johansson uh, being traded from Nashville to Colorado in exchange for the rights to Alex Gelchenyuk with Nashville retaining half the salary for the next two seasons. So basically a, a, a salary dump for the Predators. You have a potential trade of uh, Kevin Hayes, who we talked about and said that the Wild should steer clear. A uh, potential trade of him to the St. Louis Blues that's now being hung up because Tory Krug does not want to waive his no-movement clause. You have Pierre-Luc Dubois in the final stages of being traded to the Los Angeles Kings and sub subsequently signing an extension. Oh, and then you have Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck, who will likely be dealt at some point, too. Uh, Central Division's getting a little crazy here over the last couple of days. Yeah, and another trade that we uh, um, uh, should bring up is uh, Sean Dersey to Arizona. Mm -hmm. That was shocking because <laughs> uh, that that doesn't seem like a move that Arizona typically would make. And Jersey had a heck of a season with LA. And so that's a defenseman they'll, they'll miss, but yeah, just craziness. This, this division was the one that uh, has kicked started everything. Uh, it was just incredible to watch. You know, you just kept ref refreshing Twitter uh, just to see what, uh, <laughs> what was going to happen next. And, just chaos uh, with uh, the St. Louis uh, Philly deal. It kept, it kept. It seemed like it kept getting bigger and bigger with the amount of uh, players that were involved, and now it's hung up on a no movement clause. Uh, but you know, St. Louis gave a bunch of those, and they had to uh, realize that at some point it was going to you know bite them in the butt, um, and it it's clearly um, happening right now. Um, you know, it's understandable from Krug's point. Uh, you know, he has a couple young kids, and so he doesn't want to just uproot. Uh, their lives and go to a completely brand new city. And so I get it. And you no know, one wants to be in a complete rebuild either, <laughs> unless yeah. they're getting, unless they're getting a, a big, big deal from that team. They don't want to be a part of it. You know, they have the security with the law, with a big deal, but uh, it's, it's not fun to lose as we all know. And uh, no one wants uh, to, to start over, especially when, um, you know, you've had a lot of playoff success in your career. Yeah, it, and it's interesting, too, because we had some nuggets from Joe Smith and Michael Russo in their latest for the Athletic. Sounds like Alex Goligoski is going to stay mm -hmm. for the remainder of his deal. Uh, doesn't sound like there's any intention to trade Marcus Foligno. Uh, so what you see is pretty much what you get, and whether or not – you agree with that decision. Um, that's just that's just where this team is at right now. And you could be trying to really fully tear down uh, over the next couple of seasons. Um, but, you know, that Bill Guerin just does not show any willingness to do that. And so you've got a team that is very limited in what they're going to be able to do. And so their roster is going to be pretty set and is going to probably struggle in a lot of the same areas uh, that they did this past season, which is is a little frustrating, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, the the most important thing is the replacement of Matt Dumba, and is Brock Faber 
um, 100% ready to fill that top four role. Uh, he had a brilliant start. Uh, this is a giant summer for him uh, to get stronger and faster and uh, because he's going to have to play a lot more minutes. Um, and so when you're in that top four role, um, you know, you're not in a sheltered, you know, role. You're, you're going up against some of the top players uh, that, you know, the opposing teams have, and you are probably going to, you know, play special teams as well. And so, yeah, it's going to be a learning experience for him. Uh, the problem is you're relying on him a lot to, to make, to take that role uh, because <laughs> to be fair, uh, do we want John Merrill and uh, and Alex Goligoski in a top four role on this team? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, then the other option, you know, if he stays with the team, Kalen Addison, I don't know if he's a top four guy either. He might uh, just be, uh, you know, a third, third pairing uh, D uh, power play guy. And uh, yeah, it's, that's the big conundrum is, uh, you know, Matt Dumba was such a polarizing, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, player with this uh, team's, uh, you know, fan base. And uh, he actually had one of his best uh, seasons in his career this past season. So he's going to be missed a ton on this team for sure. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I would rather see Addison obviously get one of those spots on the third pairing because mm -hmm. we tried Merrill and Goligoski. <laughs> and it was a nightmare. It didn't work. So I don't know. Maybe there is – that's one of the things about Bill Guerin too is he is not hesitant to pull no. off any sort of a trade if he kind of gets in his head that he needs to. And so maybe you move through the draft and then before free agency gets started, then we see some dominoes moving so that they can get somebody else in here to help out on the third pairing. But I don't know. I'm They're stuck. They're stuck. Yeah. They're stuck unless they can, you know, unless they can uh, you know, pull a rabbit out of their hat and, uh, and make another Dmitry Kulikov type trade and are able to trade John Merrill. Or, you know, <laughs> or Kalen Addison. The problem is, you know, and Michael Russo has brought this up too, is the the other teams are going to have to want these, <laughs> these players. They saw the struggles. Do they want to take on the players that struggled? I don't, you know, do you want to take on guys that were healthy scratched uh, throughout the playoffs because they they weren't good enough? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's the same thing with, with Marco, um, you know, this team, with when Eck went down, they they would rather had played Sam Steele over Marco Rossi. Rossi, yeah, it, it's just yeah, it's uh, it was tough. You know, you you're you know top, your top ten pick. Uh, you did not want to have play in the playoffs. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to try to trade him, you know, these other teams do they want him too? So it's just like this franchise is in a, just a really tough spot because the assets that they have, uh, it, you're going to have to like beg teams to, to take on, or it's a reclamation project. You know, can, can you, can you make them not suck anymore? You know, it's, oh. it's, it's always something with Minnesota sports, right? Uh, <laughs> we saw Kulikov got traded to Anaheim and it was, he was a nightmare in, in, in Anaheim too. You know, he, he, they took the old, old a defense uh, defenseman, you know, so it's, that's, yeah, that's what you're going to have to hope a team is desperate enough to, to take on a John Merrill or um, try to, you know, f you know, figure out Kalen Addison, help him mature not clash with the uh, with the coach <laughs> because uh, Kalen that was the one of the the tough things for him too is uh, you know clashing with with Dean over the, yeah. um, you know um, over being healthy scratched uh, maybe don't say it publicly <laughs> you know <laughs> out loud because um, I think that definitely hurt him trying to get back in the lineup. Boy, this episode took a turn. <laughs> it, did. it did, but you know that's it, it is that's, what it is. It's this is what this franchise is. You know, they uh, uh, it's an emotional roller coaster for sure. Yeah, and I mean, that's everybody. Everybody who has listened to this show mm -hmm. 
this is not a surprise that this is where this team is at. And it's, right. it's frustrating that there just isn't really anything being done about it. I get mm-hmm. that. They're just I, stuck. If that yeah. if there if there's one word for this off season, it's stuck. You know, yeah. <laughs> unless you know, unless you know, you have Billy G you know, <laughs> wave his magic wand and can convince <laughs> some of these other GMs to to take on some of these assets. It's uh, yeah. they, it's going to be a fascinating week for sure. They have the film too. They yes. see all the stuff that we do. Yes. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, uh, but there's. Uh, there's one thing with Bill Guerin too. You can never count him out with uh, with pulling off deals, and we've seen him make last minute deals. We've seen him <laughs> uh, get into it with agents at at <laughs> at the draft. Um, and so it wouldn't wouldn't shock me to see something like that happen. And you know, he's also trying to hire an assistant coach too. So it's uh, right. he's got a full plate. Sounds like there may be some steam on that as well. Uh, So we'll keep our eyes out. We'll end on that high note is that (laughs) if there was a time for anything to be done, it is this week. And so we will wait and see what happens. But that will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, if this is your first time tuning into Locked on Wild, we thank you for checking out the show. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. If you're an everydayer who tunes in each and every day of the week, we're glad to have you back, and we look forward to having you join us for tomorrow's show. Uh, Make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss out on any new content throughout the week. We have new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.